use our imaginations. Do we have anyone who'd like to come up and sit with the pastor? Pray for 
each other. I just don't know where that came from. Oh, who said that? This morning is from Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 32. We start with Peter's confession. Once when Jesus was praying by himself and his disciples were nearby, he asked them, Who do the crowd say I am? They answered, John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has risen. Then he said to them, But who do you say I am? Peter answered, The Christ of God. But he forcefully commanded them not to tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. A call to discipleship. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. For what does it benefit a person if he gains the whole world, but loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you most certainly, there are some standing here who will not experience death before they see the kingdom of God. The Transfiguration. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James, and went up to the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was transformed, and his clothes became very bright, a brilliant white. 
The two men, Moses and Elijah, began talking with him. They appeared in glorious splendor and spoke about his departure that he was about to carry out at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those with him were quite sleepy, but as they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him.
is us. We can get in the way of God's blessings. God wants to bless us. God wants us to thrive. And God wants us to have those still moments here in worship or in the privacy of our home or in our chapel on wheels. Wherever we are, God wants us to hear. Hear his voice and respond. In these busy lives we have, I think sometimes we miss it. We miss it completely. But I don't think that's the only time that God will speak if we miss it. I think God continues to knock on the door of our hearts to open our minds and to feel his presence. Do you know the God, our God creator of all that is seen and unseen? How well do you know God? Does God feel out of your reach? Way up somewhere? Or does God feel right here in our presence? Or when you walk in your home, kick off your shoes and rest. Or when you awake in the morning, refreshed from sleep. How well do you know God moving and acting in your life? Intimately? In a way that you feel his nudge to keep moving. Get up. It's time to go. Do you feel him when you feel that little bit of fear? And, and you need to feel safe? Do you feel God's presence when you are on a mission? When you have something that you want to do for somebody else, and you get everything you need, and you, you pray on the way that you'll have a wonderful visit, and then God, through the meeting, the conversation, keeps shining the light on you and on your budding relationship with another person. <coughs> I'd like you to think about something this week. What has God done for you? And what is God doing for you now? And what will God do for you in your life? And in the death of the body. When you have this time of God and someone else pops into your mind, you can write that name down and push it aside and refocus on God and take care of that prayer and that relationship later. When you sit in the presence of the Lord, Stay in the moment. I know that's hard sometimes, but just coming back from a retreat, oh, did we ever have moments, just the two of us together. Will you repeat after me? I will listen for God. I will listen for God. I will listen to God. I will listen to God. I will follow Jesus as his disciple. I will follow Jesus as his disciple. When Jesus called the disciples, and I believe he calls each and every one of us as modern day disciples, when Jesus called the disciples to walk in God's ways, you know. The disciples listened. 
Not only did they listen, but they put their faith into action. Twelve. Now, who knows how many God called and how many stayed home or living in fear or weren't ready to hear the message that God had for them. But these disciples, as I hope we are, they're le they left behind their former occupations to follow a young, itinerant rabbi all around Israel, all around Galilee. They followed because they were compelled by the vision of the kingdom of God that Jesus was presenting. For first century Jews, that vision was not the peaceable vision that they had, that peaceable kingdom of Isaiah to come, but the social justice of an Amos or a Joel. It was gritty, it was political, and it was not going to be easy. Many of them were hopeful that day that someday their Roman occupiers would be overthrown and that Jesus would reign. All of them had been waiting for an anointing king, God's anointed king, God's presence returning to the temple, and the Messiah who would sit on the throne at the right hand of the Father and rule the world and the people of God. For the commoners, this was a vision of freedom from oppression, a time when peace and security would become available to them for the first time, for them to be safe for all that they'd seen and heard Jesus was the kind of leader who could make that happen, and they knew it right away. Some knew right away that he would be the one to reverse the lost fortunes and transform them from paupers into princes. Remember at this time, the Roman presence was strong, and the soldiers were very well armed everywhere you looked. They carried spears and rode iron war horses and patrolled the roads and the streets. They had heard about this young rabbi, Jesus, who was performing amazing miracles and drawing huge crowds and had become popular with the common folk as well as some of the rabbis and leaders. As the visible power of Jesus increased, so did the Roman presence. Peter was convinced that Jesus was the long-awaited, the Messiah of God. And his excitement increased with every person Jesus touched, with every person Jesus healed, with every person that Jesus fed from his hand, and for every bit of compassion that Jesus showed to the lost, to the lame, and to the least in each community. Jesus' mission as the Messiah was to point everyone to God the Father, and to make known the movement of the Holy Spirit in the world and available in their lives. Their job was to elevate the people who had been pushed aside, the people who had been lost in spirit and soul, the poor that didn't have enough to eat the incapacitated in the body. 
Jesus came to heal the brokenness and turn their hearts toward the Father. Jesus put together his executive team, his Peter, James, and John, and invites them to go up to the mountain for a retreat. The little detail of eight days indicates that it was a new day. The first day of the week will come in the presence of Jesus. It's a sign that something new is about to happen. A sign of the new creation coming for them then and coming for us now. It's on this unnamed mountain that Jesus gives the three of them a glimpse of his own heavenly glory. I don't believe that Peter, James, and John could have ever imagined what it was that Jesus wanted to tell them. Jesus told them a secret that they could not share until the right time. Before being fitted for a crown, Jesus would need to embrace a cross. That had to send shivers through them. Because in the Roman Empire, they saw people hanging on the cross, gasping for breath, crying out in pain, and for someone to save them. This was an unimaginable scenario, and the disciples immediately tried to find a way around it. Then we won't go there. We'll travel in the opposite direction. We'll keep you safe, Jesus. We won't let this happen. Jesus will protect you. We promise. But then Jesus is the one who said, no. Listen. Peter, James, and John envisioned the kingdom that was to come as riches and splendor and fame. They didn't know what was coming. But today, looking back, we know that the kingdom that came was quite different than what they had in mind but what was necessary? Jesus asked the disciples, can you keep a secret? Shh. Don't tell anyone. I honestly do not know many people who can keep a secret. I heard some giggles in that. Even though I have heard many times, promise I won't tell anyone. You heard that before? I'll, I'll keep this to myself. I'll keep it to myself. I promise I won't say a word. Inevitably, the person convinces themselves that there's an urgent reason to laugh. That if they tell, this is going to make things better. If they tell, they can bring more people in to help. Well, it always seems like there's an important reason, right? To share somebody else's secret with others. But this secret was like none other. Like nothing they could have possibly imagined or had hoped for. While Jesus was praying, his face and his clothing were transformed right in front of them into this heavenly brilliance that they could hardly gaze upon. 
it's an image that the disciples get used to hearing about. We've heard about it, haven't we? The shiny brilliance of the Christ. But back then, they must have recalled a similar occasion where Moses met God on the Mount of Sinai. And Moses' face became so brilliant that he had to cover it with a veil following. I can only imagine what heavenly brilliance looks like. It might look like putting your face to the sun and opening your eyes for just a split second and feeling that little bit of a sting. I can only imagine the warmth from that brilliance filling our soul, radiating into our hands and our feet, and remember some even out of the top. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? I will dance with you, Jesus. Or in awe of you, be still. Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Jesus beckons us. Jesus calls us. Jesus wants that light from his presence to shine on us right here where we sit and to take that power and that glory of God when we leave this place and share it, share the story and share the presence. My friends, there are so many people who have never felt that presence of God. There are so many people who have not known Christian who is pure of heart, that doesn't want to do harm, but that wants to do good, that wants them to become a part of something bigger than they can be all by themselves, so that they would feel the power of Jesus. Jesus says, if anyone wants to change their life, follow me. the heart and 
the peace of mind that we all so greatly need. Bring your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings with you when you come into this holy house. We have a box by the door that you can put your offerings in. But if you're not comfortable doing that or you just want to come into the office and visit for a bit, you can bring your offering to the office. There's a box there, too. But your offering does not have to remain financial. It can be something as lovely as flowers on the altar. It can be something as serious as taking a neighbor to the doctor, standing with them as their body is ailing. There's so many ways to be in the presence of God. And Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us. And we ask that you would show us how we can use the gifts that are given for you in your name. Join our voices together in what gift can we bring? And if you would like to stand up and stretch and, and sing, you're welcome to do that. But if you'd like to just stay seated, be comfortable. And you listening on home, at home, I hope you're participating. I know you can see the screen. I hope the Lord bubbles up inside. our time of communion together. Communion means a couple different things. In the church, it usually means the cup and the, the bread. But it's more than that. It's a relationship with Jesus, and it's a relationship with all of us as the community of faith. So we're going to Let us 
let us pray, and then we'll turn in our hymnals to page 13 for the, the um, order will be on the screen. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and to prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warning and forsake our sin, that we may be great with joy coming from Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, you sent your messengers and prophets to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us the grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet you with the joy of the coming of Jesus, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to continue on page 13 if you have your hymnal open, but all the lyrics will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and with the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery and sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, and he gave thanks to the bread for the bread, and he broke the bread, and he said, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of Jesus coming in the body, in the flesh, we take this into ourselves, that we would be one body with Jesus. When the supper is over, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks to you, God. And he gave the cup to each of his disciples. Drink from this one cup, all of you. 
This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may for the world be the body and the blood redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast with him at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to use the word sins today. A sin is different than a trespass. A trespass is going somewhere that you know you shouldn't be. A sin is different than a debt, knowing that you owe something that you can never repay. A sin is a sin. no gasoline, 
and Poland has closed its borders for refugees. So we need to pray. Oh my. Lord Almighty, send your presence among the people who are making the decisions that put others in harm's way. Lord, let them feel your presence. Let them hear your voice to stop. suggest the money go through UMCOR, which is the United Methodist um, Relief Group. Depending yes. on relief, that's a good way to know that it goes to a safe place. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll gather all the money into the office and we'll send that through United Methodist UMCOR. Chair? Prayers for travel because my sister and I and several members of the Monday Night Sororo Holy are going to travel to Globe for a dual memorial service for Sandy Chambers and her husband Clint and Sandy both with uh, my sister for, for a, a few years and her sister Sherry Van Cleve has both for years and Sherry has been charged with getting all of this together and it's been a real stress on her so prayers for travel and prayers for the family. And, and the names again? Chambers and Van Cleve. Lord, we lift up these families to you and ask that you would speak clearly to their hearts, that they would feel your presence and assure them that someday they will feast in paradise once again.
five years ended today, I hope that you have taken, have had something to take with you in the message, in the scripture, in the songs, and in the prayers. And until we meet again, whether it's here in the sanctuary, on the street, or in God's paradise, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. That peace that passes all understanding and comes right into our very being. Amen. Thank you, Caroline, for playing the piano. Thank you, Lisa, for being our lector. And thank you for Megan, who keeps the ball rolling. Thank you for our videographer, Philip. And for all who greeted in the name and the joy of the Lord. Our closing hymn is, O oh Lord, hear me.